and it was literally like back to front my boxer shorts were just out i had to kind of make light of it and and address the issue on stage hi i'm Sai from don broco and this is feedback loop with prs guitars europe I think it would be when we uh, played Wembley Arena, um, which was amazing because uh, my first ever gig was Wembley Arena. When I was uh, 14, I went to see Incubus there and that was like a really special moment for me. And then to get to come back and headline it um, in our own right, you know, many years later, it was just a bit of a, a mind bending experience. Um, my favourite part of touring with Don Broco is, is just the kind of camaraderie of being on the road with your mates and, and playing music. I mean, you can't, you can't really beat that. It doesn't kind of matter how far down the road you get as, as a band. You know, if you're with guys that you love and, and you're making music you like, that really is as good as life gets. So just being on the bus with the boys and playing a show at the end of every day, that really is, yeah, that is what dreams are made of for me. <laughs> um, I mean, I love all parts of the process, but I think touring would have to be my favourite because you really get to see the culmination of, of the other two things that you've been doing. Like writing's amazing and then recording, you get that real buzz of, you know, seeing the things that you've written come to life in a different way. But then being on the road, getting to see the thing that you've written and recorded connect with people, um, that really is where the, the magic lies. So yeah, I'd say touring for me. <laughs> I would like to be a sommelier because I love wine and uh, I love drinking it. <laughs> so uh, I also uh, love traveling. So if I could be, you know, hanging out in Italy or hanging out in the USA or hanging out in New Zealand, just, you know, having a great time drinking wine, I think that would be uh, pretty ideal for me. <laughs> Wow, dream dinner party. Um, it's quite easy for me. Um, my favourite artist of all time is Prince. Um, I'd love to hang out with Prince. Uh, so I would absolutely have a dinner party and he would be my number one invite. Just Prince. <laughs> Just Prince, me and him could get awkward. <laughs> Hope we get on. <laughs> Um, I've definitely had some bad experiences doing the high leg kicks on stage. I split my trousers uh, very publicly at Slam Dunk Festival in 2015 or 16. Um, and it was literally like back to front. My boxer shorts were just out. I had to kind of make light of it and, and address the issue on stage and apologise to the crowd for the indecency of, of what had just happened. Um, but shortly after that, I, I stopped wearing trousers altogether and switched to shorts. And... Uh, since then, luckily, touch wood, I, uh, I haven't had any malfunctions. <laughs> <laughs> I think probably um, one of the strangest things about me is I really love prunes. Like, no one seems to like prunes. Everyone's got a kind of, everyone's got a, a, a kind of feeling that prunes are, are, are a shortcut to the toilet. But actually, I don't find that is the case at all and I just love prunes I've got a fairly infinite capacity for eating them so yeah that, that seems to be something people don't really understand about me when I talk to them about it so maybe prunes <laughs> a key ring um, that uh, our singer Bobby uh, had when he was a little boy like a really little boy um, and it was knock off like Manchester United merchandise, I guess, you know, when you're on holiday to Greece and they've got like loads of weird stuff, just they're selling in shops and it was like, oh, Manchester Super Red's number one fan. And it was just like a weird thing he had on his keys. And our, um, our drummer is an actual bona fide Man United fan. And one day we went to the studio and Rob turned up with this key ring that he'd found in his house and gave it to Matt as a present. He was like, oh, dude, I found this key ring. It's funny because you like Man United and it's fine. And it happened to be when we were writing the song Manchester Super as number one fan. And at that point, it didn't have a title. It didn't have a theme. And there was a, a gap in the song where it was like, oh, we need to shout something in this bit. You know, it could be anything. Shout anything there, it'll sound good. And Matt was holding this key ring and said Manchester Super as number one fan. So just shouted Manchester Super as number one fan. And it kind of informed then the lyrics for the rest of the song. Um, I am not a huge football fan, but... 
uh, when I would go to games, if someone asked me who I supported, um, it would have to be Norwich City because my granddad would take me to Norwich City on Boxing Day and we'd always watch the football when I was little. So I'll say Norwich City. Plus I love Delia. <laughs> Uh, in Rainbows by Radiohead. Like, I love Radiohead, I love like all their stuff, but there's something about In Rainbows that I can just keep coming back to, and it's got just a little bit of everything, you know, it can be really somber, it can be really down, but it can also, there's moments of like happiness and joy in it, and whenever I listen to it, I'm always just struck by like, how am I not bored of this record yet? I've listened to it like a bajillion times, but yeah, it's just, it sounds great, it's so well produced, like the songwriting's amazing, like, it's so interesting, and I'm always just finding new things every time I listen to it, and that's like a really, important thing for me in, in albums like discovering something new the more you get into it and somehow I'm still discovering new stuff in the album. I would approach and um, I would tell him to definitely be in a band because there was definitely a stage um, in in my life where you're kind of confronted with that point of like am I gonna try and make a go of being a musician or am I gonna you know, just hunker down and, and do a more typical job. And that was, for me, um, I remember like a, a real difficult part of my, my growing up. I was really torn. Um, and luckily, um, I decided to go one way. And, and the fact that I did, just the experiences that I've had and everything that's come with it, I would grab my younger self and say, just stop worrying about things and, and go and have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> Um, at a pub, my, my drink of choice is a whiskey ginger because I'm not too good on beer anymore. It makes me very bloated. and <laughs> So now I've, I've switched to, a, I, I like whiskey, but I couldn't drink a lot of straight whiskey. So whiskey ginger is, is just beautifully refreshing and, and feels kind of refined. So <laughs> that would be my drink of choice. Adore Marmite. Marmite's one of my favorite things in the world. I'm really into the Marmite peanut butter which is uh, absolutely right on my street. <laughs> Even Marmite lovers don't seem to like the Marmite peanut butter, but I love it. So please keep making it Marmite. <laughs>